Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The mysterious grave shared by two Tudor queens. Following the death of King Henry VIII, his children would continue on the Tudor dynasty and would be the only Tudor monarchs before the throne passed to the Stuarts. Henry VIII would have hated the Scottish monarchy being invited to come and rule England and he hoped his Tudor family would still be on the throne today. But after his death, Edward VI, his son, despite being younger, came onto the throne over his two half-sisters, Mary and Elizabeth. Both would become queens and both would rule over the country and the pair could not have been any more different. However, shockingly, Mary I and Elizabeth I were buried in the same grave and were buried together, with Elizabeth buried on top of her half-sister, Mary. But what is the story of the grave shared by two Tudor queens? Now Mary I was also known as Bloody Mary for her Protestant burnings across her country. The Catholic Queen would receive a notorious reputation for her brutality and she restored Catholicism as the religion of England following the beginnings of the English Reformation. But despite all of this, she was afflicted by her poor health and also suffered greatly with failed pregnancies. She had a false pregnancy that carried many of the symptoms of pregnancy, such as morning sickness and gaining weight, and during this time in the April of 1555, she released her half-sister, Princess Elizabeth, from imprisonment. However, these symptoms that Mary was suffering with were false, and it's believed she was suffering from some sort of tumour or cancer in her stomach. Mary believed that her unfortunate pregnancy was linked to the fact she had tolerated heretics in her realm and had not gone far enough punishing Protestants. But Mary I believed she was pregnant yet again in 1557. However, this also would not result in a child being born and with this Mary was forced to accept that to carry on the Tudor dynasty, her half-sister Elizabeth should become her successor and would become queen after her. Following the May of 1558, Mary became very weak, suffering from possibly ovarian cysts or uterine cancer, and on the 17th of November 1558, she died at the age of 42 at St James's Palace. Elizabeth I was then made queen, but Mary I in her dying days had one wish regarding her funeral and burial. Mary stated that she wished to be buried in a tomb next to her mother Catherine of Aragon, who was buried inside of Peterborough Cathedral. Catherine had been shunned by her former husband Henry VIII and was forced to be buried in a less high-profile burial after she died. Mary wished to be interred alongside her inside of Peterborough Cathedral, but this never happened. Mary specifically requested that her half-sister Elizabeth I should exhume Catherine of Aragon and should then rebury her alongside with Mary, giving Catherine and Mary a huge ceremony fit for the queens that they both were. But this was unrealistic, as Elizabeth's claim to the throne rested on the basis that Catherine was never a legitimate Queen of England, and that Elizabeth's mother, Anne Boleyn, was actually legitimate. With this, Mary I was buried on the 14th of December 1558 inside of a temporary tomb in Westminster Abbey. It was part of the iconic church which was considered out of the way, and where rubble from broken altars had been piled on earlier. Elizabeth I never built a tomb for her half-sister, and didn't either for her half-brother Edward VI. This could have been a financial issue, but Mary I would at some point get her wish resting in death alongside another queen, but it would not be her mother who she would lay at rest next to. It would be Elizabeth I, her half-sister, who was actually interred in a tomb above her. Elizabeth I is considered one of the greatest monarchs that England ever had, and was the last of the five Tudor monarchs. She was the daughter of Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII, and ruled from her half-sister Mary I's death until the 24th of March 1603, when she died at the age of 69. She was known as the Virgin Queen, and saw off the threat of the Spanish Armada, and her people became known as Elizabethans. She also oversaw the development of culture in her realm, with literature and the theatre thriving with writers such as William Shakespeare crafting iconic works during her reign. In her final days, Elizabeth I was plunged into a deep depression by the deaths of her close advisers and her close friends, and in the March of 1603, she began to become sick and remained in a settled and unremovable melancholy. 
she would sit motionless for hours and would not snap out of her thoughts. And following her death, James, the Scottish king, was also proclaimed the King of England. Elizabeth's coffin was carried down river to Whitehall, and on the 28th of April, her coffin was then taken to Westminster Abbey on a hearse and was drawn by four horses covered with black velvet. It was said that Westminster was supercharged with multitudes of all sorts of people in the streets, houses, windows, leads and gutters that came out to see the funeral and when they beheld her statue lying upon the coffin there was such a general sighing, groaning and weeping as the like hath not been seen or known in the memory of man. Now James I, now King of Scotland and also England, realised the need to bury Elizabeth in an elaborate tomb and give her the burial that was befitting of her. He knew he had to honour Elizabeth to help win over his new kingdom, as Elizabeth had a very popular and long reign. Many people in England had not known anyone else as their queen, and James began to craft a tomb for her in Westminster. After her tomb was finished, Elizabeth I was interred inside of it, However, James I had Mary I exhumed and also placed her in Elizabeth's tomb. Mary was placed in a vault below the tomb and Elizabeth's coffin was then placed on top of Mary's to emphasise that Mary as a monarch was below Elizabeth in her standing. There was never actually a proper tomb built for Mary I and it's likely that James I did not want to spend money building one for her. But what is strange is the fact that the two sisters had so many differences and so many disputes, but they remain today lying together in the same tomb. Princess Elizabeth as a young lady would even be imprisoned by Mary I at the Tower of London, as Elizabeth posed such a threat to her. It's likely also that Mary hated Elizabeth at points in her life based on how their father treated Mary's mother in favour of Elizabeth's mother, Anne Boleyn. This would have likely resulted in much anger from Mary's side. The biggest difference in the two Tudor monarchs is their religion. Mary I was a staunch Catholic and actively went around persecuting and executing Protestants in many brutal ways. But Elizabeth I was a Protestant who actively went around persecuting and executing Catholics in barbaric ways too. The fact the two are interred together at the heart of religion in England today is rather bizarre considering their differences. But today Mary I and Elizabeth I lie still in the same tomb made for Elizabeth. Elizabeth's tomb is incredibly ornate and is a monument found inside of a room in the north aisle of Henry VII's Lady Chapel. The Latin inscriptions around the tomb translate as sacred to memory, religion to its primitive purity restored, peace settled, money restored to its just value, domestic rebellion quelled, France relieved when involved with intestine divisions, the Netherlands supported, the Spanish Armada vanquished, Ireland almost lost by rebels, eased by rooting the Spaniards, the revenues of both universities much enlarged by the laws of provisions, and lastly, all England enriched. Elizabeth, a most prudent governor, 45 years, a victorious and triumphant queen, most strictly religious, most happy, but a calm and resigned death at her seventieth year left her mortal remains, till by Christ's word they shall rise to the immortality, to be deposited in the church, by her established and lastly founded. She died the 24th of March, anno 1603, of her reign the 45th year, of her age the 70th, to the eternal memory of Elizabeth, Queen of England, France and Ireland, daughter of King Henry VIII, granddaughter of King Henry VII, great-granddaughter of King Edward IV, mother of her country, a nursing mother to religion and all liberal sciences, skilled in many languages, adorned with excellent endowments both of body and mind, and excellent for princely virtues beyond her sex. James, King of Great Britain, France and Ireland, hath devoutly and justly erected this monument to her whose virtues and kingdoms he inherits. However, on the base of the monument is a small reference to Mary I, who is buried below Elizabeth. It says, Partners in throne and grave, here we sleep Elizabeth and Mary, sisters in the hope of the resurrection. So the tomb carries great reference and celebration of Elizabeth, but this is not the case for Mary I, and there is little writing devoted to her. 
There is reference to all those persecuted by the queens on a stone that says, Near the tomb of Mary and Elizabeth, remember before God all those who divided at the Reformation by different convictions laid down their lives for Christ and conscience sake. However, James I would make another tomb nearby, and that was for his mother Mary, Queen of Scots, who was executed during the reign of Elizabeth I, with the English Queen signing her death warrant. However, Mary Queen of Scots' tomb inside of Westminster Abbey was made just a little bit nicer and larger than Elizabeth's, showing James's subtle dedication to his mother. But still today, the last two Tudor monarchs lie together in the same tomb, with Elizabeth I's body lying on top of Mary's. It's shocking to consider that, because of their differences, this is what happened. But they were united by one thing, the fact they shared the same father, Henry VIII, who is remembered as one of the most brutal and notorious kings the world has ever seen. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.